the pleasant county of Durham has paid dearly for winning the rich seams of coal beneath it and off its coastline. Between Sunderland and Hartlepool alone, there are six big coastal collieries where for over 75 years the spoil from mining has been tipped onto the beaches below. That is the problem. This is stage one of the solution. The hydraulic pumping of waste directly to the water's edge. Eventually, it will go out to sea. December 1977. A working party, experts from the Department of the Environment, the National Coal Board, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, and the county and local authorities of Durham have come to view the experimental pipeline. This goes a long way towards solving our problem, arrived at after a long series of trial and experiment. We must reconcile the beach clearance scheme with the vital need to avoid damage to the fisheries offshore when stage two pipes the waste out to sea. No solution can be arrived at overnight. This is the coastline in the summer of 1975. The breakers are carrying particles of waste back onto the already soiled beaches. For the enormous problem then, as now, is the disposal of over two million tons of waste from these pits every year. And in addition, there are 700,000 gallons of liquid waste every day. Above these beaches, within only a few square miles, live the families of over 10,000 men, all of whose livelihood depends on these coastal collieries staying open. The future of the county's major industry, coal, lies in the rich seams of these highly technically advanced pits, the biggest undersea coal field currently being worked in Europe. Can you clear the rock away and save the coast this time? Can you keep the beaches clean? Can you dig the coast? But inevitably, over the years, the accumulated waste was such that the hard-working tides, which once cleared it away, could no longer cope with the quantity. At Nose's Point near Dorden, for instance, spoils slowly built up until much of the shoreline vanished beneath gigantic dumping grounds. Something more than the clearance affected by coal pickers making their modest living had to be done. To clear such beaches as these, really drastic action was needed. What is more, there are many other beaches along this coast, only a mile or two from the collieries. Here at Crimden, near Blackhall, local people have established a whole leisure family holiday community. Beaches like this are only too vulnerable. Once the decision for action had been made, it was quickly taken. The tide rolled back again on a green unpleasant land. Drop grey rock from coal mines covers up the beach. This is Blackhall Beach in November 1975. An army of caterpillars, bulldozers, draglines and heavy duty trucks was really in big business 
cleaning a beach of the build-up of three quarters of a century of spoil. On a green, unpleasant lawn. Bring the big machines along. Doors are grabbing. Dangerous broken wire ropes mixed in with the waste are hauled up like rusting spaghetti and sent to the scrapyard. Moving rock from the Durham shore, waves upon the strand, make the tide roll back again on a green unpleasant land. Scooping, digging, blasting as the tombstone of the past is carried far away from here. The coast is clearing fast. Moving rock from the Durham shore, waves upon Much of the black spoil was amazingly high in coal content and able to be sold commercially. Tangled wire and heavy blocks, now you are no more. Down through years of sweat and toil, clearing off the shore. Moving rock from the Durham shore, waves upon the a lot of the other waste goes up to the top of the cliff to form the foundation of what will be reclaimed land, where topsoil will return it to agriculture. But the stubborn remains of the aerial flight has to be dealt with by even more ruthless methods. Ironically, the biggest I saw was the quickest to be demolished. Meetings and discussions at national, county and local level have been taking place to decide what to do with the continuing waste of working pits. It has to go somewhere. This meeting at Easington was about pumping it to sea. Employment is mere labourer's concern upon the satisfactory working of the coastal colonies. We in this council chamber, we've always recognised that this is a particular sensitive problem and one which the National Coal Board has uh, been dealing with and been conscious of for many, many years. So that uh, we welcome very warmly Mr Hurst to our meeting this morning, Mr Hurst. Barging to sea and rail transport mean increasing costs. Quarry filling is finite. Stowing underground greatly increases the cost of coal. Taking spoil inland by road affects public areas. Now let's talk about pipelining, because I'm pipelining 10,000 tonnes of waste, and I'm talking about solid waste because we have two types of waste in the game of the benchmarks. There's the solid heavy waste, and there's the tailings, and that's the stuff that comes off the washer. And there's not a lot known about the scouring action down here. Local opinion and interest were taken into consideration no less than overall policy. They just don't just take an ordinary, the pilot scheme I'm talking about, they just take, just take an ordinary <laughs> low tide but they look into the tides. We haven't yet decided which is the right colony to do with the experiment. I would hope personally that the experiment could be done at Horden first anyway, because we've ceased at tipping at Blackhall, and I think I may at this stage just deviate and say that the way that we've handled the Blackhall by stopping tipping there, giving up a lot of ground which was difficult for us operationally, Difficult for the county reclamation team to come in and reclaim. But in a year, I think that's something that we can be proud of, that that scheme's gone on as well as it has had. The North Sea is a valuable fishing ground, yielding lobster, crab and whitefish. Coal spoil, though in no way poisonous, could have a blanketing effect on the fish food on the seabed. But the sea's action breaks up the spoil into particles the size of a grain of sand, dispersing it over a wide area. When the pipe is eventually taken out to sea, the outfall place will be carefully judged and monitored. Durham is a county that is rightly the concern of the environmentalist, a long word with a simple meaning, a person who cares about the world he lives in. 
A county that contains nature reserves, like Castle Eden Dean, has been marred by the remains of the many worked out pits inland from the coast. But the program of land reclamation is advancing fast. At Haswell, an old winding house has been kept, a craggy monument to the industrial past. But most relics of the pits are less interesting. And so tips have become seemingly natural hills, gently contoured to fit in with the landscape and return to pasture land. But however natural these hills may look, they are still in fact reclaimed tips. And as such, they need careful draining schemes, which will be grassed over finally. Drainage is vital to land reclamation, at the coastal pits no less than inland. Back at Blackhall, there is both the cascade type of drainage, as well as the more familiar concrete pipes. The decision to build an experimental pipeline was part of a long train of events that was taking place many miles from the Durham beaches it was to affect. Samples of Durham waste were sent to London and work in the laboratories of the Imperial College was done on the various sizes of spoil on settling velocities and the general behavior of suspended coal waste in water. The size of particles at the discharge end of the pipe is vital in order to determine the size of the pipe. Waste from Durham was also taken to Cornwall, where English China clays have a plant where they test the minimum velocity in which solids will remain in suspension. Durham spoil was mixed with various amounts of water and pumped through the flow pipes. Velocity and pressure were recorded. The results made it possible to find the right combination of factors. The consistency of the solids in water the power of the pump, and the right pipe diameter. Autumn 1977. The experimental pipeline at Horden was being built. The system is designed to handle particles of under one and a half inches. Oversized material is fed into an impact crusher. Shale and water are mixed in a 2,000 gallon tank and forced through the pipeline by a 475 horsepower solids pump. The 10 inch bore pipeline can transport 120,000 gallons of pit water and 200 tons of waste an hour from the colliery to the shore. It is one and a half kilometers long, passes under the main coast railway and under stage one of the scheme, pipes the waste to the beachhead in line with the present aerial flight. During the course of building the pipe, various linings had been tested to establish the rate of wear inside. The pipe, which is made of steel, is lined with basalt. All this means high capital costs, but running charges are stable. This was what the working party came to see in December 1977. So we have come full circle. The massive exercise to dispose of the waste of Durham's coastal collieries, and in doing so to clean the beaches, may well find applications in other industries. It would be agreeable to claim that these sandy beaches are the cleared colliery ones. But no, time and tides neither wait nor hurry. Dusty tips and dirty sands were part of the price of coal. But remember Blackhall Beach 
in the summer of 1975. Here it is, only a year after being cleaned, and already sand is covering the pebbles along the shore. Durham's colliery beaches have the same geological features as these along the coast. One day, they too will be amenity beaches again.